Hello, I'm David D. Cosmo. Welcome to ECTV Live. I'm joined by my regular co-host, Rusty Fender. Rusty, Good welcome. to see you. Good morning, David. And it's good to see you as well. <clears throat> One of our area's uh, perhaps best resources and yet not best known resources is a type of subsidiary, if you will, to Lackawanna College, and it is the Lackawanna College Environmental Center. Michelle Wheeler is uh, representing the center. Michelle, let's back up right to the beginning and tell the viewers exactly what the center is and how it got started. Sure. Thanks for having me. Good morning. Glad to have you back. Um, I'm with the Lackawanna College Environmental Education Center, and we are located in Covington Township. We have 211 acres, a new LEED certified facility, and we provide environmental education from um, ages 5 all the way up until <coughs> retirement. So. And, a, a, and a growing field of interest, right? And we, you've been with us, this is the third time. So you were here when they were just putting the foundation in for the place. We yeah. followed this from inception right now to a full-blown facility. Right. And you're right, David, everything now is called ENS, and erosion and sediment control, whether you're in construction, of course, this is ground zero still for fracking, hydraulic fracturing in five counties. Mm -hmm. Everything is all about the environment, and that's a good thing. Yep. 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 And now it's important for, especially the kids to learn about it, but it's interesting that you you don't stop there. Now, and, and so that everyone understands this too, this is not just a facility where students enrolled at Lackawanna College go. Correct. We do have our Lackawanna College students. They come to us for some programs, but we also have programs during the summer for summer day camp children can come to us, so that's open to the public. We have school field trips. We're hot and heavy in school field trip season right now. So um, every, any given day at our center, you might see, you know, 100, 150, you know, second graders from Dunmore or Moscow Elementary and stuff. So yeah, what do they get to see when they come there? We have um, several different programs they could choose choose from. Um, designed specifically for each age group and grade but one of our most popular is called habitat explorations so they come to us and they'll get to dig for macroinvertebrates in the stream <coughs> they'll use these sweep nets and check out the insects in the meadow they get to use dip nets and check for frogs and salamanders in the pond so just getting outside enjoying nature yeah, but one, one of the things we've said before on, on, on your visits, and with some other educators as well, is that the icing on uh, the cake here is the fact that this is a hands-on experience. Exactly. You know, yeah. it's, it's great to it's look at a working a, facility. And, and, and you've got to have yeah. books. You know, I don't want to uh, don't want to minimize the importance of having uh, books from which to study, but I know that certainly with the kids, the interest peaks when they have that hands-on experience. For sure. Definitely. We like to take a, um, a, um, a definitely a hands-on approach, uh, interdisciplinary, you know, experiential. Not only do we want them to have the hands-on um, experiences, but then we want to give them time to reflect on them. So during all of our summer day camps, they get some time to, to nature journal, we call it, and it's built into the day, so they get to you know, immerse in the activity, and then we take a few minutes to sit in nature, and they can write about it, they can draw about it, so. And keep their little log book, so to keep speak. Keep their log book yeah. for the day, yeah, yeah. And so it's we been, teach it's them been, how to do that. And it's been state-of-the-art leadership, too. Mark Volk, who, by the way, his birthday was Sunday, he's been great in following the newest, latest trends in the area. If they don't follow, you know, the reading and writing and arithmetic of the old days, but he's on the cutting edge of what is new and how to get a great job in an area which is predominantly big in this area right now, too. Right. Big yeah, time. Yeah. yeah. How was, how was this uh, site uh, selected? Was this uh, something donated to the school? Or? It was actually donated to the school. Um, Miss McKenzie was a former graduate of Lackawanna College. So she had the um, old family farm. It was 211 acres, so she donated it to Lackawanna College. Wow, what, what a great gift yeah. and a uh, you know, very, very usable thing mm -hmm. for uh, And <laughs> speaking about the property, we actually just opened um, the property up, our trails, to the public. Oh, so, how nice. So if you go to our website, you can find our trail map. And, and we just what have is a brand that website? New, we have a brand um, new kiosk, so you can Let go me hold there. it up. I'll show sure everybody. Thing. This is the website so they can get information on, on using the trails or anything yep. else that you're doing there. From dawn until dusk, the trails are open. There's about five 
trails, and they range from a really mild, leisurely one quarter kind of hike through the forest to a more intensive, the blue trail if you're looking at right. the map. And that one's about a mile and a half. And you're not too far off of 307. We're not. We're only about three miles Correct. off 307. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what's great, and it's one of the reasons I pointed out that you don't have to be a student at the school to use the facility, right. although students do. But the fact of the matter is that through various ways and means, whether it be the trails or special programs, that it's open to the public. And I know you've got a whole long list here of some of the things. Yeah. Let's kind of take them one by one and have a look. Um, May 4th through June 1st, yes. uh, Natural Wonders. Uh, mm -hmm. What's that all about? Is that where they do this, the things in the stream and everything? Or? We do. We try to get down to the stream with most of our programs. So at least for one of those days, the students go down to the stream. That's our, our preschool program. We call them the, our early explorers. So that's from ages three to six, and wow. it's with a parent or guardian. So the, the parent or grandparent joins them for the afternoon. And um, they come, there's an introduction to the theme for each day. Everything we do is educational. So, yeah. so Natural Wonders Preschool, and it's, it's um, preschool for nature preschool. So if, if our topic is wind, you know, we'll read a story maybe or something that does our introduction for related the students to wind, right. related mm -hmm. to the topic for the day. And then we go outside and we do our, our nature exploration in regards to the wind that day. So we have a bunch of activities, you know, they can feel if it's windy, they have a little flagging tape, they could see which way the wind is blowing. We look at the trees and the leaves and, and then there's always a craft for the Natural Wonders program. So then the kids come back inside and they do their craft for the day. I remember you telling us too that you have your own wastewater treatment, which is the biggest thing now because a lot of folks don't know, David, you have to be licensed by the Commonwealth yes. to either treat water with a class A, depending on your city, class A, B, C, D, mm -hmm. or wastewater, you have to be licensed to know and and you've been doing yeah you've been doing the the treated primary secondary and tertiary treatment of the effluent that's the treated wastewater for your local streams so it's a good thing because you certainly practice what you preach up there we do and our our waste treatment facility is closed looped so we have no um we don't dump any effluent into the streams it's, or anything. It's zero waste. Zero That's waste. fantastic. And we use our gray reclaimed water in our toilets that as amazing? flush water. Yeah. 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 That's great because there's, there's a black water a, and the gray water is water that you wouldn't necessarily drink. Right. But it's for use in every other thing except potable water for drinking. Right. So it's incredible. It's a high-class, state-of-the-art facility yeah. which you use and which you teach about. Right. And we actually use plants to filter all of our effluent. Incredible. So it's called a marsh machine. See, that's great. The less chlorine, the less chloramine, the less potassium permanganate that you discharge into the system, the cleaner the environment is. That's really great. And we use this with all of our programs, too. Um, so we have students that come in and they test it from the in and then the, the out point. You know? So we do chemical testing so that they can see how clean our, our water is The influence and becoming. the effluent. Yeah, yeah correct. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good, good deal. The, the uh, kids that participate in the natural wonders now they're uh, not chemical testing. <laughs> yeah, no, but I, we, we we brought it up as long as uh, as long as Rusty had mentioned because that's uh, what an attribute to have right. at yeah. camp. But but to the Natural Wonders program, now, are those kids coming from existing uh, preschool programs, or are these you know parents that can just sign kids up for something like this? They're parents that just sign their children up for our preschool program. Yep. Well, that's that's, that's now, great. Now, can you get a degree in environmental science just by taking these specific courses from the college? Um, Good question, right? Because it's, there's so many different branches of that. I wonder if you could get a degree in environmental you know, science. We have, Lackawanna College has a associate's degree in environmental science. I say two year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and while we're on that subject, and I know we've mentioned this before, but I think it's important, uh, Lackawanna College is known for its uh, law enforcement training. Yes. Um, Big time. And we, we've covered the graduation here on ECTV many, many times. But you, you naturally assume that those students are going to become police officers, whereas the, the uh, opportunity for other law enforcement related uh, jobs, careers, tied to the environment. We don't think about those, but you exactly. did. We did. So how does that work? Yeah. <laughs> 
So we have a one-year certificate program. It's called Conservation Natural Resource Officer Certificate. And you, we partnered with our pre-existing police academy. So you take the police academy first. And after you graduate with the police academy certificate, you come to our center in Covington and you take a one semester 16 credits and that earns you your conservation natural resource officer certificate. And you are then eligible for DCNR park ranger positions. Oh, that's great. So yeah. one, yeah. one year yeah. 16 and credits. Mm -hmm. Yep, one year commitment for both programs and then you're eligible, job ready. Yeah, and, and I would think that Actually, many of the, uh, the, the ranger positions that uh, uh, came into being before this was available didn't have all the police background. Which, exactly right. So that's very, very exactly valuable. Right. Yes, so we partnered with a, a retired chief ranger from DCNR to develop this program. And prior to our program, or if you don't take our program or don't have an Act 120 when you're hired, DCNR has to send you and pay to have you certified okay, in, now in the Act 120, 120 is the firearms is training. The, uh, the is police, academy. Okay. police academy. Police right. academy, right. right. Yeah, the 134, I think, is the I'm, other. I'm curious, yeah. uh, are there many people taking advantage of that who have gone through the police academy? We do have several students. We're, we're hoping for our first cohort this fall. So we have a few students registered right now in the police academy, and we have mm. a few cadets that are already graduated that would like to then just join us for the 16 credits in the fall. We have this program finalized for through financial aid, so you can take it as the one-year certificate, or you can also take just the 16 credits, and that's also financial aid um, approved. And, and you know, for the state, you can also take the civil service exam as well, and really get you know transferred in from this into a a wildly high paying if you're lucky enough to pass the state exam because don't forget you're testing with people statewide right right but if you take that then you know your state works a 35 to 37 hour week there's right. usually no weekends involved and things like that massive benefits yeah. it's like you know you get a job with any government like That's that what I mean. the it's benefits outweigh the pay dave yeah, you know, the, the the career opportunities that you don't necessarily think of uh off the, the bat That's right it's exactly. great yeah. um you have a a beekeeping club, a new beekeeping club. We do. Uh, and we had talked about this uh, once or twice before when you were getting more and more into this. So mm -hmm. explain, if you will, what goes on with that. Sure. So uh, a couple years ago, we decided to start offering a beekeeping certificate. So we're in our second year of our beekeeping certificate. We have about um, 15 students that are going to be done with that program this May. And we found that the students from last year uh, they were missing the connection that they were getting in class you know so they had gone through the formal component of uh, how to be a beekeeper now they were doing it for the first time hands-on and they so here was here was, here was from the textbook right to the to right the, yeah, yeah. so we developed a beekeeping club they meet at our center um, on Tuesdays the second Tuesday of every month at 7 p.m. and it's just a local network it's open to the public it's free you don't have to be one of our graduates from uh -huh. our certificate program our instructors, the one who coordinates and facilitates the club meetings, so she's a wealth of knowledge, and it's just a, a good place to be <laughs> if you um, no have any intended. bee questions. <laughs> yeah. And that, that's starting up on May the 9th, so I wonder, I guess they can still make an attempt to get involved immediately. And did you see the news mm -hmm. about half the bee population in the United States was lost last year? This is another exciting field to be in. Yeah. Half of yeah. the bee population. Well, I had uh. heard, heard through news sources over the past few years that we were losing them and people don't realize how valuable they are right. in agriculture. Exactly. Right. Uh, so you obviously recognize that point as well. Right. So, so we take the holistic approach to beekeeping is looking at it from a world perspective um, but we also look at it on an individual perspective so what are the benefits to the local economy what are the benefits to our local food sources our local farmers but also you know if you're putting the time and energy into taking care of these bees we are also showing people how to uh, make it a viable business you know what what can you do with the honey how do you collect honey properly what are the rules for Pennsylvania how do you sell Not only it? that so, the number one insect for cross-pollination is the is bee. bee yeah yeah so all of the environmental implications 
limitations are built into this course in our class. I would hope and how not to get stung would be. That would be a good, that should be the <laughs> yeah. first course actually in first aid. <laughs> I think <laughs> bee biology is the first course. The second would be, be beekeeping be equipment. Keeping, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. That's good. Yeah. Well, uh, these, these programs are so much on the forefront uh, as you mentioned with uh, the uh, the environmental, the environmental, it's just just wonderful. Uh, spring wildfire, uh, yeah, wildflower walk, and that begins May tenth, five thirty in the evening. Now I'm gathering this would probably take advantage of some of those trails you were talking about. For sure, uh, we have a wonderful naturalist. Her name is Jane Fry. A lot of people know her locally as Hiking Jane. She. Um, likes to have people come and she, she does a little hike in the, in the forest. She does utilize the trails and we'll be in search of any spring wildflowers that night. So, so kind of nice if you're somebody that's an, you know, an avid outdoorsman or not so much and you're curious to see what's blooming this time of year in our own yeah, backyard. We've got lots in our backyard yeah. right mm -hmm. now. Unfortunately, some of them have infected. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is bad, pop, yeah. bad the, pollen month. The trees oh, are out right Oh, Lord, now it too. is. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, I can see the car has a, a, a film. Yes, that film, film on in the morning. Yeah, almost a greenish one type of, the, of. One of the worst pollen couple of months in history the yeah. past month or so. Yeah, you're, you're not alone in ailing, Dave. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's one of the, the negative effects of the <laughs> that's, environment, that's I right. guess. Um, this one is, is, I guess Rusty and I probably ought to sign up for this. <laughs> Outdoor survival skills for adults. <laughs> uh, although, I guess we could use some indoor skills as well. But <laughs> All right. That's like survival, David. What do you have in mind? So we've been doing quite a few outdoor survival, wilderness survival programs for the last couple of years. We even have an outdoor wilderness survival summer camp, a whole week where kids get to come and talk about and learn how to make fire and what to be prepared and everything from what to bring with you to the mental clarity if you're in an emergency situation, how to handle yourself. Um, but we were finding we were having a lot of adults saying, hey, we'd really like it if we had an adult program. This is great, the kids have fun, but we wanna have fun too. So we specifically designed this program. You have to be 16 years or older, and we're gonna get into a little bit more of the, um, the heavier how to wilderness survival oh. than just, just the stuff we took. David we and I survived kids. broadcasting for 45 <laughs> years. We should get a job as an adjunct teaching this course, let alone going to learn about it, Michelle. I'd pay for that program. <laughs> you, know, you know, I think back though to, uh, <clears throat> um, what was the, the movie where he was stranded on the island? Uh, uh, Tom Hanks, uh, Cast Castaway. Cast Castaway. Cast Castaway, and there's a, a very dramatic scene in there where he's trying to start a fire, and, and, and you know, I, who hasn't heard that you rub <laughs> two, two sticks, sticks together? together, Correct. and of course he blisters his oh, hands yeah. tremendously, I remember th and another movie that comes to my mind, I'm, I'm, I'm just a movie now, so these, about one fellow telling the other, you know, you can make uh, fire from ice. I, you, you, some ice if you have in, in that kind of environment and you clear it off you use it as a lens like a magnifying Magnify glass the sun but these are right. these are the kind of things that you know you don't normally think of because you don't have to you're think right. of them you're right but by gosh uh <clears throat> i know i don't travel in the car anymore in the winter without a certain amount of what you would call emergency mm -hmm. supplies. Mm -hmm. Nothing elaborate. Flashlight. Uh, flashlight, yeah. uh, you know, maybe, uh, maybe a couple of, uh, of those beef sticks or something mm -hmm. that probably last For 200 protein. years. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, in those circumstances, because I've had, I've had the occasion twice to be stranded overnight in the interstate uh, during snowstorms during my news coverage days. So, that brought to mind some of these things, but we don't think about some of the other. You're driving in a very rural area. You have, unfortunately, an accident. Your car is off the road. No cell service. No cell service, and you're trying to find out. So th this, is, this can be invaluable. Absolutely. Now, who does the instructing on something like this? That one we have hired out through um, Sand Cut Outdoors. So he's a local man from Goolsboro who's... Um, been teaching survival skills for quite a while. Um, I mean, wilderness you just, just think about, you know, we talk about the plants, just think about the plants that are edible right. and those that are not. I mean, I wouldn't know where to, where either, to begin. Neither would I. Mm -hmm. But exactly. you could hit a situation where you've got to know something like that. And there's, That's right. it gets to be so much that you can know or learn. So we do occasionally have uh, programs that are specifically dedicated to um, wild edibles. 
So not even really looking at that from a, a, a survival, program. but we do. We don't have one this spring, but, but that's a program that we usually have. Yeah. yeah. Now, you know, one of the big uh, things in, in our mountainous areas around here is people looking for mushrooms. Mm -hmm. Do you know what kind to look for? I don't. No, I don't. Yeah. And, and they, <laughs> they are not only dangerous, they can be deadly. Yeah. yeah. Yes, indeed. You know, Very poison specific. mushrooms. Some yes, of the indeed. old timers have been doing that for years. Well, they could yeah. tell from the way the top, the base is, from the tip to the stem, and how yeah. many spore, right. you know, cavities they have underneath. It's amazing. There's like a thousand different kind of mushrooms yeah. and toadstools. The, the mushrooms are probably the most complicated as far as harvesting no from doubt. the wild. But there's a lot of other things. Um, there's wild leeks you can pick and mm -hmm. wild garlic, you know, the mustard plants. Um, there's quite a few things that even, can you picture the uh, daylilies that grow along the side of the highways sure. wild, the, the orange right. one? You can eat their, their bulbs, the little tubers. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Chrysanthemums, yeah. a lot of the flowers are edible and they yeah. contain actually high protein and a lot of moisture. Yeah. When are we going to run that uh, outdoor survival skills? Uh, that's Outdoor survival is May 24th and that one is from 5.30 until 9.30. Now, and, and most of these programs you want to be registered for, right? Because you've got to yes. account for how many of Yeah, them. we do um, require pre-registration for all of our programs. Okay. So this way we know how many are coming. Um, for the outdoor survival skills, something like that, we couldn't have a class more than 35 people. Sure. Um, and the same with sure. the, the wildflower walk. You know, if you get 80 people. You can't people, have a mile of people. <clears throat> right, you know. Uh, well, just before we close the show, we'll we'll show that number and the uh, uh, the uh, web address again as well. But there are a couple other things mm -hmm. I do want to talk about quickly, and one and this sounds very very uh, interesting. Native American stories yeah. with live animals that's coming up in June. Okay. Uh, what do you have planned for that? That's going to be um, a really great family program, and that one will be inside. Most of our programs are inside and outside, so this one is geared to be inside, family-friendly, all ages. You have like a lodge facility or a classroom facility? We do. Like we call it the multi-purpose room, okay. um, but we can seat about 130 people in there. So this will be an inside program, and we partnered with the Endless um, Mountain Nature Center, oh, and yes. she's got a lot of live animals. So Rebecca Lesko is going to come, and she is going to... Um, have Native American stories along with her, her wild animals that she's, she has. Uh, but you have a target age group for that? Um, we, no, that one's family friendly. So, okay. you know, probably not newborn, but you know, if you have an attentive two or three year old and up, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that very, very interesting. Um, the other thing, and I, I don't want to ignore it because you've been doing this for a while, and you've had, I understand, quite a bit of success with it. Yes. This is the summer day camp program. <clears throat> Pardon me. Beginning June the 19th and running through August the 4th. Yes. Uh, tell us about the, the day camps. So we have different age, age day camps for different, um, different children, and they can join us from a week of everything from Closer Look for the little five and six-year-olds. We have art ventures. We have a wilderness survival. We have EcoQuest, Eco Explorers. Lots of outside exploration, lots of running games, lots of team building, lots of making new friends, lots of crafts, just lots of fun playing outside. And you've had a pretty good response to that over the years. Really great response. And and if anybody's listening and they're thinking they're interested, most of the camps are full, so definitely get oh. on the website and check it out and call soon. <laughs> so yes. even though that begins in June, this is the time. Oh, this is the time to register. Yep. Yeah. Um, how many can you normally take in a, in a particular group? We like to keep a low counselor to child ratio, camp counselor to camper ratio. So usually our camps fill between um, about, about 20 is the max. Some right. of the little guys about 16. Sure. Now where are the, the counselors and the instructors for programs like that? And in addition to some, where are they coming from? We like to hire um, Students, high school students, or college students are our main um, camp, camp counselors. Mm -hmm. We give them a training program. We have junior counselors that are high school. We look to our own Lackawanna College students, but we also partner with a lot of the other local schools. Um, and they do go through a training program. They do they, go through a know. training, yeah. yeah. We like them to be first aid, CPR certified, along with um, learning all the curriculum and how to teach and stuff like that. Sure. Um, with all these programs on the agenda already. I don't know whether you're still envisioning other things. Um, you tell me. <laughs> well, one of the things that I envisioned from last year that we got um, into fruition this year is our 
um, summer camp that is for high school students, but it earns them college credits. Oh. So this is a great way for yeah. somebody that's in the environmental field, if they're thinking that they might be interested in high school, they can take a nine day course at our center. And again, we same teaching philosophies as all of the other programs we do, mostly outside, mostly hands-on, definitely is, is a rigorous program. We have to keep the, the collegiate feel for that one. Um, and there's some tests involved where most of our summer camps and stuff don't have sure, any but then they required get, they Testing, get the college credit. But they do earn three credits. So this summer we are doing environmental quality. So we'll be focusing on a lot of water pollution, um, air pollution, and investigating our local habitat. And you've been very big on the environment for a long time. It's got to be very impressive for you, Russ. Yeah, since 1970. Like I always said, you know, I was the ecology minded before they invented the term back in 1970, before Nixon invented, the, you know, created the, uh, the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency and all that. And I think we should have done a lot more a lot sooner, but it's good to see all the recycling now in the towns. Nothing worse than, uh, nothing worse than having no wastewater treatment because there's not a heck of a lot of fresh water and most of the water you get now has been water that has been used countless times right. before. If you yeah, need an extra my, instructor. I, my, my dance card's <laughs> kind of full with jobs right now, but thanks, I'll keep you in mind. Thank you, David. Okay, listen, I want to, I want to, before we go, I want to again give the website because again, all of the programs we've talked about here, um, whether they be a full course or whether it's, uh, I guess other than using the hiking trails, right? Yeah. Other than that, you want to be registered. Mm -hmm. So you're going to want to go to this website or call, and I can't read it because it's, be, it's, it's behind me. So can you give me the number that where I'm looking at there? It looks like 842? Yep, 570-842-1506. All right. Michelle Wheeler joining us from the Thanks, Lackawanna College Environmental Education Center. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank always you for a, having me. It's always a full pleasure. plate there, and, and we're so glad to see it. Rusty, thank you so Interesting much. Interesting show today, Dave. Good Mark to see McClory, you. Mark thank you, thank sir, you, for keeping us in focus as always. I'm David DeCosmo for ECTV Live. Until we see you again next week, here's hoping all your news is good.